Hey everyone, my name is Ben. I work for California State Parks here in the Oceana Dunes District along the central coast of California. Today we're going to be talking about the earliest residents of this region, the Northern Chumash Native Americans. The Northern Chumash have been living here in this area for more than 10,000 years. And today, the descendants of the Northern Chumash, the Yak Tichu Tichu Yak Tohini, continue to live amongst the same places as their ancestors, carrying on their language and traditions. Throughout this video series, we're going to learn about how the Northern Chumash lived, their culture, and how they use the natural resources of this area. Today, we're going to be focusing on Chumash rock art and cave paintings. So Chumash had a spoken language with different dialects depending on their locations, but they didn't really have a written language, or I should say they didn't really have a written alphabet or written letters like we do today. Instead, they used pictographs, which are symbols that represent different ideas or objects. Rather than using letters to write out words, the pictograph itself had the meaning behind it. They didn't have a pictograph for every different word or phrase in their whole language, but they did have them for many specific important religious ceremonies and important topics in their culture. Also, they did not write their pictographs down on paper or books like we do today. They used something much more long-lasting to record their stories. They used rock, more specifically, cave walls. Many paintings have aged so well that even today there are still hundreds of caves throughout California, from Morro Bay down to Malibu, with Chumash rock paintings lining the walls. Chumash Painted Cave State Historic Park near Santa Barbara is another awesome state park that has one of the best preserved rock art sites in the state. If you can't visit there in person, at the end of the video I'll share a link to a 360 degree virtual tour of the cave. It's definitely worth checking out. While these paintings may look like abstract artwork to us, we might not know their exact meanings, Chumash Cave Paintings actually served an important purpose. Chumash used cave paintings as a way to record important events, communicate ideas, and to depict concepts of the supernatural world. Now, hundreds or thousands of years ago, you couldn't just go to your local art store to buy all of your painting supplies, could you? No, so the Chumash had to make all of their own painting supplies from the natural resources around them. In order to paint, what do you need? Definitely the paint itself, a paintbrush, a paint bowl, maybe a few bowls to hold your different paints in. They made their paints mostly out of three different types of materials. Um, they made their black paints mostly from charcoal, partially burnt wood. They made reds and oranges and a variety of different shades of colors from a type of rock called iron oxide, which is a mineral with a really great color to it. And then they made their white paints from a type of mineral called diatomaceous earth, which is uh, white because it's made from diatoms, fossilized diatoms, which are microscopic little organisms that live out in the ocean. The Chumash would then grind all these different painting materials into really fine dust and add in liquid like water, um, egg whites, and the juice from milkweed plants to create a really nice high quality paint. They made their paint brushes from animal tails or the roots of the yucca or soap plants. A soap plant is a really cool native plant that has many uses, including its root being used to make an actual cleaning soap. But the exterior of the root has this really good fibrous material, as you can see right here. Um, this is made from the exterior of the soap plant root, and this fibrous material makes a really great paintbrush. And their paint bowls could have been made from stone, from shells, or even from animal vertebrae. If a certain Chumash tribe did not have all the necessary paint materials near them, they could trade with other groups for those materials. Uh, for example, the paint itself was dried up into discs of certain colors, and those discs of paint could then be traded. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed learning about Chumash rock art and cave paintings. I'll leave you with a few questions to ponder. What do you think is the biggest issue threatening the survival of these cave paintings today, and what can you do to help them survive? I encourage you to learn more and don't forget to use the link at the end of the video to go on a virtual tour of Chumash Panda Cave State Historic Park and there will also be a link to the Northern Chumash website which has lots of great resources to learn about them as well. Thanks for watching! Mm -hmm.